together and ask the Lord to bless our service this morning. Thank you for being in church today. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can sing that song by faith, knowing that we're on your side and you're, you are the victor. And that even in this life, you said that we have been given the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I praise you for that. I thank you, Lord, that we can come in here today having troubles and trials and problems and circumstances not good in our lives, but still have the joy of the Lord and still be victorious on the inside because of the Holy Ghost and because of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to have that this morning. I pray that you'd speak to our hearts. Thank you for what this day is. Thank you for Mother's Day. And I thank you, Lord, for my mom and the blessing that she's been in my life all these years. And I thank you for her faithfulness all those years when Dad wasn't what he should have been. And she just stayed in there and stayed faithful. And Lord, I have no doubt that uh, were it not for you and the grace of God and also my mom and how you used her in our lives, our family wouldn't be in church today. I praise you for that. I thank you for Becca and her mom and the blessing that her mom has been in her life and the influence that she's been on her. And I thank you for Becca being a blessing to my children. Lord, I thank you for Mother's Day and all the good moms that are in our church. Lord, I praise you for them. I pray that you'd give them a good day today. I pray that you'd bless their heart. Help us as their family members to appreciate them today especially. Lord, we ask you that you'd speak to our hearts in a special way through the singing through the preaching, through everything that's done today, that it be a blessing to you and a blessing to your people. But we know if that's going to happen, we need the Holy Spirit. And all is vain unless the Spirit of the Holy One comes down, the old song says. And Lord, we pray that the Holy Ghost not be hindered. I ask you to help my heart to be right. Lord, I pray for every heart. There be nothing in our hearts today that might grieve the Holy Spirit. We know that list, Lord. We pray it regularly. Anger, bitterness, and wrath, and malice, and envy, and strife. Those are the things that grieve the Holy Ghost. I pray that you'd help us to forget whatever this week has had us most frustrated. And help us to get our minds on you and how good you are and the goodness of your word and your house. And I pray that you'd speak to us in a special way. We love you. Thank you for letting us be here, for the health and strength to be here. Bless those that couldn't. We'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we all stand and get a hymn book? What number, Brother Ken? Y'all switching places, I believe. 192. What is that? My Savior's love. Oh, I like this one. Everybody stand. Grab your hymn book. We thank you for being in church this morning. Now, if you're visiting with us and never been before, or maybe you visited but didn't get one of these visitor packets, these guys want to give you one of those. They're coming right now. Just slip your hand up while we're turning to 192, and we'll give you a visitor packet. You fill out the visitor card and give that to us later in the offering plate and keep the rest. So we're thankful that you're here. Put your hand up if you've got a visitor with you maybe, but somebody get them this visitor packet. Let's sing it out, 192, good and loud. Mother's Day, we're thinking about mothers and about the great characteristic they have is love. And uh, nothing compares to the love of our Savior, but the closest thing would be a mother's love. Let's sing about that, 192.
Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Thank you, be seated. back along these winding roads to the old familiar markers of the mercies I have known. And though it may sound simple, it's more than a cliche. No other words to tell you than to Oh! 
shake hands a little bit while the choir's coming down. Good singing this morning. Yeah. Get on in the rest of the service, all right. Come on, Brother Kim. Hey, don't do the offering when you get those things. All right. We have got uh, another youth choir trip this week and uh, going Saturday up to Burnsville. Planning on leaving about 445. If uh, you'd like to drive up there, the easiest thing that's been working out the best now is just to text Brother Jason and he can send you directions straight to your phone. Uh, so plan on that Saturday at 445. And then uh, in a couple weeks, we have growth visitation on the 22nd. The 25th will be Memorial Day, so that will be the, the theme. Uh, so keep that in mind, growth visitation on the 22nd. And then uh, next Sunday afternoon, there's going to be a household gift card shower for Emily Brown and Keith Parker. It will be out of the school at 5 o'clock next Sunday afternoon. Keep that in mind, and uh, let's be good to them. <clears throat> and then a uh, couple of prayer requests. Um, be praying for my mom and Bill. They are leaving on Wednesday to go to Africa for seven months, and they are taking 14 boxes on the plane with them because literally they're moving over there, uh, and then they're going to come back for a little break and then probably go back over there to stay. Uh, so be praying for them. They are leaving on Wednesday, and as they try to get set up over there, um, Let's go ahead and, no, we're not going to do that. Let's have uh, one more prayer request for uh, the, uh, the manager of uh, Bilo. His name is Brian uh, Melanson, I believe. He has just been uh, diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, and be praying for him if you would. And then we have dishes out by the water fountain uh, from Miss uh, Tina's dad's funeral uh, this week. So, ladies, we appreciate you bringing food, and uh, please go by there and pick up your dishes. Well, obviously, it's Mother's Day, and we appreciate uh, all the mothers that are here. So let's go ahead and just start by having you stand. All you mothers stand in the place. Don't sit back down now. Stand up real quick. And let us see what we got. Praise the Lord. Man, that's a lot of mamas, ain't it? I was trying to figure out about how many we would have. That's more than I thought. Praise God. How many of you are thankful for a good mama? Say amen. Let's give them a big hand this morning. Praise the Lord for it. Brother Ken's, I'm going to let Brother Ken give a quick testimony. He's got a good mama, and uh, she's, he just told you. I didn't know that he was getting ready to make an announcement about her, but she is. Uh, do you know how old she is? Where'd he go? Come on up here. Do you know how old she is? No, he does not. How many, let's go ahead and be honest. How many of you adult men do not know right now how exactly old your mom is? Raise your hand just so Ken's not by himself. All right. How many of you, listen, how many of you wives know how old your mother-in-law is? They know how old our moms are, and we don't even know. That's terrible. Uh, but Brother Ken's mom's up in age, we'll say, and getting ready to go to Africa for seven months. Isn't that something? I praise the Lord. We've met her, and she's been a blessing. The time we all went to Africa, she came with us, and she outworked all of us. So I want him just to give a quick testimony about his mom, then we'll recognize a few special ones this morning. Uh, when I think of mom and uh, going to church, probably one of my oldest first memories is sitting in church and looking through her Bible because I wasn't paying a bit of attention to the preacher <laughs> and there was a picture in there a, a prayer card basically <clears throat> of uh, some girl a little girl that she sponsored in an orphanage over in India I can remember looking and thinking my mom is affecting this girl that uh, she's never met that I'll never meet and that most likely she got saved and we'll meet her in heaven one day. And I can remember that when I was probably about four years old. 
And so, mothers, <clears throat> it's not just your kids that you influence, but there you have a great realm of sphere of influence, as you would say. Other kids, uh, grandkids, nieces and nephews. And being a godly mother is one of the biggest blessings that you, uh, a child could ever have. And I thank the Lord for my mom. And, uh, you know, my dad didn't get saved till just you know, a few years ago. And like Brother Tony always says, he's so thankful for his mom. And my mom was the same way. She always kept us in church. And uh, we, we uh, <laughs> I just love my mom and the blessing that she is. And now she's going to Africa for seven months. And I know that the, our missions program yes. is a product of my mom and Bill. Um, you know, we never used to take missions trips. And I started taking missions trips with Mom and Bill. And uh, Brother Tony said, you know, we need to start doing that. Once a couple of people went with me to Africa a couple of times, and he said, we need to start taking our own. And now the, the trips that we do every year are as a re result of them. And uh, I just thank the Lord for giving me such a good mom. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. All right. We always recognize a few mothers. We uh, don't give something to every one of them, but we want to give away some gift cards. Uh, what are they, Becca? Are they $25 Walmart gift cards? All right. $25 Walmart gift cards here for the mothers. We're going to do a little different than we've done. Let me start with this one. Does any mother here have your birthday today? Is there any mama in here today, and today's also your birthday? Anybody? We got one. Somebody's pointing. We're at right here. Ah, how about that? Miss Bowley. Go ahead and give her one right off the bat. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that two or three of you didn't lie. That's a blessing. Amen. All right, let's do this one. How about the mother who has the most kids in church somewhere today? We'll just go ahead and start with Mrs. Oaks and then see if anybody can beat that. How many do you have in church somewhere today, sister? All ten are in here today, right? Can you name them all? Hold on, hold on now. Hold on. I want to hear it. Say it loud, all right? Fast. Never mind, slow. We couldn't hear none of that. <laughs> slower, slower. Is that in order? Can your husband do that, you think? He's saying yes. Uh, we're not going to test him. Amen. Anybody got more than 10 children in church somewhere today? All right, praise the Lord. We're gonna, in a few years, we're going to stop giving it to her and just call it the Mrs. Oaks Award so other people can have it, all right? We'll change it up some. All right, let's do this one. This is the one where uh, normally ladies don't really like it. Miss Parker told me one time she wasn't going to come on Mother's Day because she didn't want to start winning it. But let's go ahead and, and do the oldest mother in here today. The oldest mother. How old are you, Miss Parker? 85. Is there anybody mother older than 85 in here today? Oh, we got one back here holding her hand up. Older than 85? No, she's lying. All right, well, we've got a lying mother in the house. We'll give the... <laughs> Brother Mike's mama over there. Normally, the mother's supposed to influence the son, but I think it's going the other way here, Brother Mike. All right, anybody beat 85 in here this morning? Miss Kelly, you ain't over 85 where she at? No. Oh, that was dirty. Did y'all see it? Oh, we got... Well, you can't win, too, sister. Uh, Miss Anna, how old are you, sister? Oh, she's also 85. Well, we're going to let Miss Parker have that since you already got the other one. Is that all right? All right, let's give Miss Parker a big hand. Miss Kelly. Look at her. Peace. I just prayed good things about you a few minutes ago, but I was having a hard time. All right, how about this one? Now, this one might be a little, uh, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't want to uh, bring any bad emotions. But what I was thinking of was this. I want the mother with the oldest living child, the oldest, I know some of you have had children already pass away, some of you that are older, but the oldest living child. How many of you have a living child over 50? Raise your hand if you have a living child over 50. All right, put your hands down. How about a living child over 60? We got one, two, three. A living child, 65. Anybody got a 65? All right, I'm gonna rule you out again since you already won, okay? How old's your oldest living child, do you know? 60. How about you, Grandma? 64. Miss Grandma wins right there. I tell you what, go ahead and give, give them both one because I only have one more. Uh, so, hey, give her one too. That's a long time to be a mother, isn't it? Praise the Lord for that. 
60 years, a mother. Some of you may have beaten that before your child passed away, but these are the ones living. Let's do this one. How many have we got left, Brother Matt? Just one. So if we have a tie, we'll have to make it up to you. Do we have a mother that has killed a deer this past deer season? <laughs> Raise your hand if you're a mother and you killed a deer this past deer season. We don't got any. I'm very disappointed. All my friends around the country think we're redneck church. And I'm just, how about killed a turkey this year already? Any mothers killed a turkey? How about a mother killed anything? Ran over a deer in your car. What have you killed? What have you, oh, you're talking about, Becca runs over everything. That don't count, praise God. What we got? Somebody's raising their hand. What you got? She hit a deer. Becca hit two, didn't you? So that's, that beats one. Did you kill them? I don't think you killed them. We didn't. Did yours die? You don't know? I tell you what, we're going to hold on to this card, and I'm going to see by the end of the service I'll have a new thought, all right? Listen, ladies, get your guns and go kill something. And t <laughs> not your husband. Thank you, Brother Ken. Thank you, Brother Ken. All right. Let's see. I don't know where we are. Let's have the offering. Let's have the ushers come and... Uh, We'll do the offering. we got one gift card yet to give away. Let me think about that for a few minutes. Somebody's yelling at me. Yes. I used to have a turkey chase my car. She used to have a turkey chase her car. I don't... All right, now we're just getting crazy. Okay. <laughs> Some of you are going to start talking about drinking turkey stuff. Well, we're not doing any of that. It was the Christian, Christian event here today. All right, praise the Lord for you being in church today. If you're visiting with us, we don't expect you to give in the offering. We would like you to put the visitor card in there. Let's go ahead and pray and ask the Lord to bless the offering. Heavenly Father, thank you for the good day in church. I do thank you for our mothers and what a blessing they are in our lives. I thank you, Lord, for these that take care of us and love us and pray for us. I pray that you'd bless them today. Bless the offering now and multiply it. We'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> kill the live feed just for a second. Does that make all y'all nervous when I do that? Let's go ahead and have the singers come. Not
That's what I'm talking about. We might not have shot anything lately, but we could. <laughs> all right, open your Bibles to Luke 15, Luke chapter 15. I appreciate all you ladies that are carrying illegally, not raising your hands. That was a blessing. Luke 15 and Mark Proverbs 31. We'll look at both of those in just a minute. Luke 15, Proverbs 31. Let's just good song. Standing on the banks of the river, looking out over life's troubled sea, when I saw an old ship that was sailing. Is that the old ship of Zion I see? Its hull was bent and battered From the storms of life I could see Waves were rough, but that old ship kept sailing. Is that the old ship of Zion I see? That the stern of the ship was the captain. I could hear as he called out my name. Get on board, it's the old ship of Zion. It will never pass this way again. As I step on board I'll be leaving all my troubles and trials behind I'll be safe with Jesus the captain sailing on the old ship of Zion, sailing out on the old ship of Zion. Amen. Good singing. Good singing. Brother Tommy's boy brought me a note just a minute ago and said, My daddy hit a deer with my mama's car. Does that count? <laughs> I don't, I don't think you get the Mother's Day card, Brother Tommy. That was a good try. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 15. Thank you for praying this week. I uh, went to a meeting in Connecticut Thursday and Friday, and it was their 30th anniversary, 30th anniversary of the church. The pastor started the church 30 years ago, and I was able to be in that service on Friday night. It was a blessing and uh, had good, good liberty preaching both nights and good spirit in the services. And Some of them started talking about uh, being here. They used to come to our meeting years ago. They were in... Uh, many of them were in the 1994 camp service where Becca got right. Many of our young people that are now adults got right. And uh, it was a blessing just kind of reminiscing about all the things. When I walked in the church, I, I walked in with the pastor. There was two guys sitting there, and, and the pastor introduced me. And one of them said, he said, are you the Tony Shirley that played the piano for a little church called Allendale? 
I said, yeah. I said, I can't believe you've even heard. Allendale ain't as big as their parking lot. I'm telling you, it's a little bitty place. And uh, they still had the tape from the Allendale Youth Choir, which is where what I was singing with when I first started coming here. And uh, praise the Lord for that, just the influence. He talked about the influence that that tape had had on him. And then uh, one other guy started asking me about getting CDs from the youth choir and different things. So I praise the Lord for the influence that the Lord has given us and uh, has given us. And so I thank you for praying. And then the youth choir went down on Thursday to a new place as well. And everybody said it went real good. Brother Jason took them down there and they mixed and sang with uh, Brother Steve Cox's choir. And uh, all the reports that I heard was that they did a great job. So thank the Lord for that. Thank you for praying. I just thought about it sitting up here. We're getting close to graduation time, and you ought to be praying for all of our seniors, all the seniors in our school, the public schools and home schools and everything. Uh, this is a crucial time, critical time. Uh, for many of the young people, they'll be leaving home for the first time after this. Some of them will go off to college and be by themselves and uh, be without some of the structure that they've had. And so I want you to pray a hedge of protection on our seniors as they get ready to go out to what we call the real world. So pray the Lord will put a hedge about them and bless them. Luke 15, verse 11. It's good to be saved. Let's look at a few verses and I'll preach to you fast this morning. Let you go spend some time with the mothers. Be back in church tonight at 6. Look forward to a good service tonight. Verse 11, and he said a certain man had two sons. And this is the story of what we call the prodigal son. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followeth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him into his fields to feed the swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave him. Most of you know the rest of the stories that he came to himself in verse 17 and realized that he had made a bad decision and said, I'm going to go back to my father's house and then I'll approach my father and tell him I made a mistake and I'm no longer be worthy to be called thy son. And uh, many of you know that the father was looking for him and welcomed him back and they had a big celebration and the prodigal had come home. And uh, we praise the Lord for that. I am thankful that you can, you can drift away. All we like sheep have gone astray. I am thankful that you can drift away from the Lord and that there's enough grace that when you come back, he'll be waiting for you and that he'll welcome you and he can uh, give you some good things things back in your life that you might have lost while you drifted away. And that's a wonderful message, wonderful story, uh, but that's not what I want to preach about this morning. I want to use this text and one other one to preach on this thought, two mothers in the Bible. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the privilege to be in church. I thank you for the health and strength to be here. Thank you for safety and traveling this week. And uh, Lord, I thank you for blessing the youth choir as they traveled. And thank you they're singing again this week. And, uh, what a blessing it is that you let us serve you. Thank you, Lord, for the good spirit this morning. Thank you for these mothers that stood a minute ago. We praise you for them. We ask you to strengthen them and bless them, Lord. As Brother Ken said, what we need, what our country needs, what our world needs is some good godly mothers to help raise this generation that's coming up and uh, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I pray that you'd encourage our mothers today, speak to their hearts and the rest of us as well. We'll praise you for it in Jesus' name and all God's people say it. Amen. For this Mother's Day, I want to preach, as I said, on that idea of two mothers in the Bible. Now, I thank God for my mom. I praise the Lord for her, and I'll call her here in just a little bit. They're a different time than we are. And I was going to wait till they get out, out of church and I'll call them where me and the kids can say Happy Mother's Day to her. But I praise the Lord for my mom, for the testimony that she's been in my life, for the grace of God that she has shown me in my life as I've watched her go through troubles and trials. I thank the Lord for her faithfulness. I thank the, the Lord for Becca's mom as I was getting ready for this uh, Message. I wrote that down. I thank the Lord for Miss Kelly and the things that I see in Becca that I know come from her. I praise the Lord for some things I see in her mama that are not in her too. But I do thank the Lord for the good things that she has passed on. I believe that. Listen, I believe also I thank the Lord for my wife. And, and this is what I wanted to say. Those three ladies, my wife, my mom, and her mom, I firmly believe that I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be in where I am in life. I don't think I'd be the pastor here. I don't think me and Becca would be the pastor and pastor's wife here were it not for our moms. And then, of course, I don't believe I would be the pastor here were it not for Becca. There's a couple of times in the last 19 years that uh, I have been mad and in the flesh and wanted to do one thing. And she has, through the Holy Spirit, cautioned and said, what about this and what about that? And probably prevented me from making mistakes that would have hindered me being where I am. So I thank the Lord for my mom, for her mom, and for the mother that she is to my children. And let me say something to you today, ladies. Don't ever underestimate the influence of a mother. 
You, you young ladies that maybe you're not mothers yet, let me say something to you. Don't underestimate the influence of when you get a chance to be a mother. You ought to desire it. Now, I know it's not God's will. Some ladies want to have a child and never get to, and we don't understand all of that in the mind of God, the will of God, but I know this. I think you ought to want it. I think a, a, a young girl ought to want to be a mother because of the influence, the ability to influence that you have in that position. Abraham Lincoln said this, All that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my mother. So let me point out a few things about two mothers in the Bible, and we'll let you go today. First of all, I want to look here in the story of what we call the prodigal son and talk about the missing mother. The missing mother. Now, there are no guarantees when it comes to raising children. We understand that. Now, there are some principles in the Bible. Uh, there's a principle in Proverbs. If you train up a child in the way as you go, when he's old, he'll not depart from it. Now, that's not a promise. That's a principle. It's not 100% because we've seen it even in the Bible. Samson had a good mom and had a good dad. Samson's, mom, Samson's mother, she kept the Nazarite vows herself while she carried Samson in her womb. And she taught Samson all the Nazarite vows. And her and her husband, when he got old enough to start looking around and he was wanting a woman of the Philistines, they told him, said, no, no, that's not what we do. That's not how you should do it. And so Samson had a good mom and a good dad and we know that Samson became a rebel. And Samson broke a lot of the vows. And so there are no guarantees, listen to me very clearly, in the uh, raising of children. But I will say that a good Christian mother gives a person the best possible chance to turn out what we would call turn out right. Now again, you can do the, listen, I, some of you that have prodigals, let me say this to you, uh, just because they're prodigal doesn't mean that you didn't do everything right. They can go prodigal. Adam and Eve had a perfect dad. Do you understand that? Adam and Eve was in a perfect environment and God was their father and they still chose to sin and ruin not only their lives, but the lives of everybody that ever came after them. And so uh, you can do it just right and still have a prodigal, but I will say to you, the best chance a child has got, I believe, is when they have a good, godly mother in their life. I wonder in this story what might have happened if this boy's mother would have been in the picture. If there had been a mom here, how would it have changed things? She may have told that daddy. See, that boy came to his daddy and said, give me the portion of the goods that come to me. I, I want to leave. I want to go off and do my own thing. Well, you know, probably if there had been a mother, she would have talked to that daddy when he said, okay, son, I'll do it. There probably would have been a mama saying, what are you thinking? How many of you ladies know what I'm talking about? Maybe you wouldn't have said it in front of the boy, but probably in the bedroom that night, the mama probably would have said, we can't let him go. Uh, he's not ready, and obviously he wasn't ready. And the mama probably would know that. She would have maybe said, I can't believe you're going to let him go. Or maybe the mama would have just stepped in and said to the boy, uh, you can go, but you can go with your own stuff. How many of you got a mama that would have said something like that? Well, oh, you can go if you want to, but you ain't driving my camel. That's what my mama would have said right there. Get your own camel, big boy. I, 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 I. You, you leave them crackers in my shelf. Get your own crackers. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, who bought you that robe, boy? I bought you that robe. I'll keep that. That's the way some of them mamas work, you know. She's, she's not wanting him to leave, and she's pretty smart. And I think maybe if a mama, or, or you probably would have had that mama, once she realized it was going to happen, that she would have shoved his bag full of snacks right before he left. Because she knows he's dumb, he's going to waste all of his money, he's going to be out there starving to death. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Mama would have put snacks in the bag. It's kind of like when me and Brother Matt go to Cuba, our wives pack our bags full of snacks, amen. Because they know, she knows Matt ain't going to eat anything over there and he'd starve to death. But uh, they put it in, that's the way this mama would have done. I think it, We don't know what would have happened, you know why? Because the mama's missing. It, it's fun and it's interesting to think, I wonder what a difference mama would have made in this story. Maybe he never goes prodigal if there's a mom there helping Maybe he never does. We don't know what might have happened. I know this. It'd be interesting to see, but we won't know because she's missing. The missing mother. I'm sad to say there's many of them today in our world. Missing mothers. Some are missing for different reasons. Some miss because of death. Some are no longer here because God decided to take them on home. And, and if that were the case in this story, obviously that is a heartbreaking thought that a young man didn't have his mother. And we've got some sitting in here that have lost their mothers way too early. Some young people growing up without a mom, not because anybody did anything wrong, just because heaven decided that in that particular family, that's how it was going to be. Uh, and there's a missing mother. And you know what it ought to make us do? It ought to make all of us who still have our moms appreciate them today. Amen. If your mama's still alive, you ought to appreciate her. And you say, well, we, we're not really getting along. Well, you ought to fix that today. 
Amen. You ought to fix You say, but it wasn't my fault. It doesn't matter. You ought to fix it anyway as best you can. You ought to reach out to her today and try to make amends because there will be a day she'll be missing because of death. That could be the case. But in our world today, there's a lot of missing mothers and it's not because of death. Some, it's because of distraction. They're not there. Maybe they're still around, but honestly, they are missing from their children's lives because they are just too distracted. Some are distracted by fun. Some feel like they missed out on some years when they should have been having fun because they had little children or had gotten married early or whatever the case may be. And now uh, they want to have a good time and, and their children look around at times and they're just not there like this boy in the story. The mother's missing because she's distracted by fun. Now, I'm not against having fun. Obviously, I like to have fun. We laugh, we cut up. I like for my wife to have a good time. But I want to tell you something more important than that right now is that she is present in the lives of her children. Some are distracted by fitness. I'm not against you being in shape, but listen, most mothers are working. We'll talk about that in a minute. And I realize about have to. But what's bad is when they're, when they're working and then when they get off work, they're more interested in being in shape than they are being at home with their kids or they're more interested in having that fun I was talking about than they are spending time with their children. Hey, and your children are growing up with a missing mother. Amen. You say, I thought you was going to encourage us. I'll get to that in a minute. But our kids need their moms. This boy needed a mama. My boy needs his mama. Now, he's a mama's boy. Where's Miss Elliot? His teacher. He's a mama's boy, ain't he, Miss Elliot? Yes, he is. But I praise the Lord for it because he's got a good mama. He loves his mama. I, I've worked on Brandon Krause all through the years, didn't I, Miss Krause? Where is Brandon? Is he in here today? He had to leave. Was he here earlier? Brandon was always, you know, an athlete and all that other stuff, and he was real cool. And, and when he got a little older, he wouldn't hug his mama in public, wouldn't show her no public affection. And Miss Krause started saying, Mr. Shirley, Brandon won't hug me. And so multiple times in front of school and kids and peers and ball games and everything, I'd say, Brandon, you go hug your mother right now. And he'd go, we'd make him, wouldn't we, Miss Krause? And you know what? Now I see him do it all the time. That's a blessing. Hey, you're never too cool to hug your mom. If you are, you're too cool. But mom, part of the reason maybe you've just been missing, you didn't foster that, you didn't, uh, you know, you didn't work toward that. Don't be missing because you're distracted by stuff that's not really important. Even though, again, I'm not against fun, I'm not against fitness, some are distracted by finances, as I said. And I'm not against mom's work. And that Proverbs 31 lady we're going to look at in a minute, she was very busy in financial things. But let me say something to you. It's more important that you have some time with your kids than it is that y'all have you know, the extra things in life. If you had to sacrifice a few things to have more time in their life, you'd be better off to do that. They need their mother. They need their mother to be in their life. Don't be the missing mother uh, because of distractions. Don't be the mom that has no idea who her kids' friends are or what their grades are or what their interests are or what their spiritual condition is. Don't be that mom that is so disconnected even though you're still in the house, you're distracted by this and this and this and this that you don't really know what's going on in your children's lives. You need to know. I just feel like a mama probably would have known this boy was in this shape emotionally. Before it got so bad that he was ready to say, I'm leaving, a mama probably would have known it before it got that bad. Whereas we dads, come on now, we're not too sensitive about such things. The missing mother, some are missing because of death, God decides. Some are missing because of distraction, some are missing because of desertion. Some have decided that it's all about them now. Don't I deserve to be happy? And I'm not trying to be hateful, but listen, we all deserve to go to hell. And then above that is the grace of God, and I do feel like that in the grace of God, He has a plan for us to have a certain amount of joy and happiness. Happy is that people whose God is the Lord. But not at the expense of holiness. Not at the expense of what is right based on the Word of God. And there are some that have just left because... They're more interested in themselves right now. Desertion. In 1 Kings chapter 3, there were two moms that came to Solomon. You can go ahead and turn your Bibles to Proverbs 31. We're going right there here in just a second. In 1 Kings 3, two ladies came to Solomon and they were having an argument over a son, over a baby. And most of you know that story where uh, one of the ladies had rolled over on her son. They both had newborn sons. And one had rolled over on her son in the night and smothered him and he died. And, and she knew that another lady had just had a baby, so she went and switched babies. 
and stole that lady's living baby and gave her the dead baby. And so now they've come before Solomon, the king, and, and uh, they're arguing over the life of this living baby. And both of them are saying, it's my son. And the other one said, no, it's my son. And so they're going back and forth. And, and if you remember that story, Solomon's solution was, somebody get me a sword. How many of you remember that story? Shake your head. Solomon said, get me a sword and bring it in here. And everybody, I'm sure everybody went, what's he going to do with the sword? And he said, bring the baby and divide the living baby in half and give half of it to this mother and half to that mother. And if you know how it went, the, uh, the true mother of the baby, her heart yearned within her. Her heart, I, I, I guarantee you, she felt sick at her stomach at the thought. And so the other lady was going, yeah, go ahead, that's right. We'll just split the baby. But the true mother said, no, 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 don't hurt the baby. Go ahead and give it to her. And Solomon in his wisdom realized that, well, this is the real baby. This is the real baby's mother because she would never want her baby to be hurt. You say, what does that show us, preacher? It shows us this. She was willing to have heartbreak herself to protect her child. She was thinking of the child before herself. She was not distracted. Moses' mother risked her own life rather than be separated from her baby. For three months she hid him. Can you imagine at nights when he began to cry and how she'd say, be quiet, be quiet. They're going to come, they're going to come because they would kill him if they found him alive. But she risked her life rather than be separated from her baby. Some mothers are distracted. Some are missing because of desertion. Don't be the missing mother. They'll be gone before you know it. Boy, the older I get, the truer that is. I remember when Carson was born, we had a youth rally in Kenny Townsend, Brother C.T. Townsend's dad was preaching, and he looked over at me, and he said, Brother Shirley, he said, don't turn around twice, she'll be 16 years old. Carson just turned 13 this week. It's unbelievable. Can't hardly believe it. I'm telling you, before we know it, they'll be gone. Be there while they're there. Say amen. amen. The missing mother. Don't be the missing mother. But let's look in Proverbs 31. Let me give you the good stuff here real quick. You say, preacher, you're trying to encourage us. I am trying to encourage you. I'm trying to encourage you to be there. They need you. You say, well, they got a good daddy. We got a good... Yeah, but they need you, mama. I'm telling you, they need you. They need you engaged in their life. Interested in their life. Paying attention to what's going on in their life. They need you, mama. The missing mother. But here in Proverbs 31, we have the model mother. The model mother. Let me very quickly show you from these verses what all a good Christian mother does for us. I want to use an acrostic of the word mother. I was going through this. Boy, I'm agreeing at times, and I think, isn't that the truth? Looking at my own wife, my mom, different things. I'm going to give you, uh, you know, one word for every letter of the word mother. I'll show you from this lady's life, the model Christian mother. First of all, she was a manager. She was a manager. Let's read a few verses starting in verse 10, and then I'll give you these things. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that she shall have, he shall have no need of spoil. Look at verse 28. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. First of all, I want you to see in these texts that she was a manager. Like most of the good mothers that I know, this lady kept everything going for this family. She kept everything going. Now, I know some of you men feel like you keep everything going, but if you'll back up and be honest, it's probably the lady holding most of it together. If you look at it, she controlled the clothes in verse 13. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. In verse 21, she's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. If my wife said, hey, will you get Cooper's clothes? I'm not exactly sure where they all are. Come on, let's be honest. Some of you don't even know where all of yours are. Honey, uh, where do you keep my, you know, you don't even know where your certain clothes are because she takes care of the clothing in the house. How about the food in the house? Verse 14, she is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maiden. She considereth the field and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands. She planteth a vineyard. And so she's controlling the clothing of the house, the food of the house, and even very involved in the finances of the house. Verse 11, the heart of her husband does safely trust in her. Look at this. So that he, he shall have no need of spoil. He don't don't have to go out and fight battles and take the spoil. He knows that it's under control and if it's not, uh, she'll let him know. He can trust in her. She's not wasting. She's not being, you know, uh, careless with the money and so forth. And in verse 18 look at it. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. She's, she's doing some things to help uh, with the finances of the house. Look at verse 24. 
She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. And so this lady's involved in all the clothing of the house, all the food of the house, all the finances of the house. You know what it looks like? She's a manager. She's helping make sure the house runs smoothly and runs uh, like the Lord would want it to in such a way that there's peace, such a way that things are getting done. How many of you guys understand, if you're like me, that if your wife disappeared, you'd have no idea how to function for a few days? Amen. If something happened to my wife, honestly, I, I wouldn't know it. Miss Styles at times, she, she's like my mom at the school and has been all these years. And, and she'll say, they're getting ready to go on a vacation or something. She'll say, now look, if something happens to me, she'll say, this is where this is. This is where that is. This is what you need to do there. And I'll say, quit talking like that. Quit talking like that. What I really mean is, I'm not listening because you're coming back to take care of me. <laughs> Amen. And I'm the same way with my wife. She'll say, look, I'm going to be gone. She gets my face and says, focus. I hate it when she says that. How many of you guys hate it when they say that? You know what they're saying? You don't listen to me. I can't believe she would say that. She says, focus. I'm leaving the kids. I say, I know. Where are you going? That's what I used to say. Where are you going? One time she went to see her great-grandmother that was having surgery. Isn't that right? Down in South Carolina, she's having surgery or something like that. Something serious. She had told me two or three times. And then she was gone a couple days with her mom. And somebody said, hey, where's Becca? I said, they're at a birthday party for somebody in South Carolina. One of the, I believe it was Miranda that was in the office, and Miranda said, um, I think it's surgery for her grandmother. I said, it is not. She said, I said you don't know. When she got back, guess what it was? Surgery for grandmother. I said, how's the birthday party? What? I'm just kidding. How's your grandmother after the surgery? You know. She grabs my face. She says, Focus. I'm leaving you this, I'm leaving you that. And listen, here's where the food is. And there's, there's frozen pizzas in the freezer. And there's these things that you can cook if you need to. And she, how many of you guys know what I'm talking about? You know why? She understands. She manages everything. That's that good, that good godly mother. She's a manager. You know what else she is? She's an overachiever. Look at verse 10. Her price is not just equal to rubies. It's far above rubies. In verse 29, thou excellest them all. The good Christian mother gets more done than even seems possible. When you leave us husbands at home for a few hours, we do good just not letting them get killed. Isn't that right? Come on, fellas. If they get back and the kids are still alive, we feel like we've succeeded. What they want us to do is have them fed and bathed and asleep and the house straightened up. How many of you ladies, that's what you're expecting? Well, not really expecting. That's what you would love to happen. Say amen. amen. Listen, you're asking too much. <laughs> really? I'm not kidding. If the house is not burned down and they're alive, you ought to pat us on the back. <laughs> we do not multitask like you do. All right? It's hard for us to do all that sitting there watching TV yelling at them. That's right. But you know what? Them women, they do all. Have you ever noticed that, fellas? When we're left and we start trying to help them, we realize how many different things they do. They're overachievers, man. Overachievers. She was a manager. She was an overachiever. She was a teacher. Verse 26, the first part. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. Who is it? Now, I understand there's some of you, some of you husbands are sitting here thinking, man, I didn't read the book on wives when I got mine. I'm sorry if that's the case. But a good Christian mother is these things. And some of you guys may do a little bit more of it than others. But I, I started thinking about who is it that teaches most children how to walk? Now, I know dads will get involved. But you know when we usually get involved, it's when mama says, Hey, come here. Come here, let me show you something. Isn't that right? Mama says, Hey, come here. Come here, let me show you something. And they get daddy over there. And they get the baby right here and say, Now go, go, go. And then we get all excited knowing what's coming. Oh, 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 come on. Come on. Come to daddy. Come to daddy. You love daddy. Here's a dollar. Come to daddy. And that baby takes a step, and we tell everybody we taught our kid how to walk. And we don't realize that mama already had that set up for you. Who teaches most of them how to eat? Mama does. Who teaches most of them how to clean themselves? Thank God mama does. <laughs> we got some husbands in here that throw up if they get to participate in the cleaning. Isn't that right? <laughs> Brother Stephen Kidd's going, yes, yes. I wouldn't admit that, you sissy. But let's be honest, even those of us that participated, I participated a lot in that, didn't I, Becca? Okay, maybe not a lot. <laughs> she tells people I didn't keep Carson by myself for how long? That's not true. That's a lie. She says till she was nine months, I didn't keep her by myself. That's just because I wanted to be with you, baby. <laughs> I just couldn't stand the thought of not being with you, so we were just together all the time. You think about who does the teaching. Who does the teaching? That mama teaches them how to walk, how to clean themselves, how to eat. 
I regularly pray for wisdom for Becca. You know why? I know she is, she's doing much of the day-to-day -day teaching in the lives of the children. The Bible said here that this woman, she opened her mouth with wisdom. Moms, you ought to ask for wisdom. You are teaching. She's a manager, keeping everything going. She's an overachiever, doing more than seems possible. She was a teacher, and she was a helper. Look at verse 12. We're almost done. She will do him, talking about her husband, good and not evil all the days of her life. She's a helpmeet to the husband that God gave her. In verse 20, the Bible says she stretched out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reached forth her hands to the needy. This good godly mother, she is a helper. She's not only helping her husband and her children, but she's helping others. I believe it's built into the heart of a mom to be a helper to people. It's built into the heart of a good Christian mother to help folks. They see a child needing help. It don't even have to be theirs. Y'all know that. A mama sitting somewhere and there's children. Uh, I see it all the time when kids start playing up here. If a lady's talking to me and there's somebody else's kid right here, the whole time she's talking to me, she's going like this. Like she's going to catch that baby she thinks is about to fall. Mothers have something in them they want to help. They help anybody's child. They have that in their heart. Listen, us men on the other hand, we don't even hear our own children when they're in complete danger. Isn't that right sometimes? Come on. Dad! 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 Mama comes from on top of the roof where she's fixing the shingles and comes downstairs and says, Can you not hear them? What? And that baby's hanging off the, you know, the balcony up there about to die and you didn't even hear it. We're not built to say. Let's be honest, we're not built to say. You ladies think we lie about sleeping through their cries, but that ain't a lie. Not for me. I slept right through it. How many of you men slept right through it? You honestly did. Now, I'm not talking about you men that heard it every time and rolled over and faked. That's what most women think. But I'm going to tell you, it's just not the same. I believe God put that helping spirit in the heart of a good, godly mother. She's a helper. Listen, she's an encourager. Look at verse 12. I already read that one. She'll do him good all the days of her life. Verse 26, the latter part says, In her tongue is the law of kindness. Thank God for the mothers who have encouraged their husbands and children on to great things. Sister, you can go, Miss Amy, you can go ahead and get ready and just play anything, Brother Ken, if you want to get something ready, it doesn't matter. Blind Jesse. How many of you know who I'm talking about when I say blind Jesse? Jesse Craigle, been here through the years many times, and he, uh, he's blind, but he plays the piano like crazy. Unbelievable how good he is. He's on the CD. If some of you got the C.T. Townsend's live CD, Jesse's on there playing. He sings the first part of Jesus Never Fails. Jesse's a blessing. I was just in Connecticut, and uh, they were talking to us about all these meetings. They used to be at our teen camps, this, that, and the other. And one of them said something about Jesse. Or I said, boy, we were just with Jesse. And, and I said, blind Jesse, so they knew who he was talking about, uh, in, in Youth of Blaze. Me and Becca was there together, and we sung with him. He played the piano, and me and her sung with him. And Samson Ryman had walked him up to the platform, and he was sitting off to the back. And uh, Samson was shaking his head. He said, man, he said, this reminds me so much of some of them camp services where Jesse would be playing the piano, and we'd all be singing. So I said that to them there in Connecticut. And when I did, they said, he's from here. Well, I thought they meant up north. I knew he's from up north. I said, yeah, I know he's from Delaware. They said, no, no, he's from here. That's his mother right over there. And Jesse's mom was in the service, and she looked over at me. She said, I heard somebody say blind Jesse. And I said, well, you know, if I just say Jesse, they don't know who I'm talking about. But say blind Jesse plays the piano, everybody knows who I'm talking about. She said, oh, yeah. They started talking about her. They said that, and one of the preachers mentioned her later, and they said that when, when Jesse was a little boy, she didn't ever tell him he is blind. And said one day he was playing outside. Listen, they lived upstairs. He was downstairs, outside the yard, riding his tricycle round and round. He's blind. Y'all understand that? And said he came running in the house. Got off his tricycle, came to the steps, and she told me, she said, we just let him do. We just let him do because he could. And she said he come running into the house, and a little girl had told him he was blind. He had said something about his orange tricycle. The little girl said, what do you care if it's orange? You're blind. He said, what? And he went upstairs and said, Mama, am I blind? And she said, well, yeah. She said, I just never thought to tell him. Just figured he knew. And she said, and we just wanted to let him do everything he wanted to do anyway. You know, one year at camp, they got an old car from a junkyard and they let him drive. Samson Allen Ryman got on the passenger side and was telling him left and right, slow down, speed up. And he was driving out the gravel road when it was still gravel, going out to the camp. Blind Jesse. How'd you like to meet that person on the road? Praise God. Hey, that was Jesse. Whoa! I thought about, what a mom. What a mom just telling him, you can do it. You can do it. 
We had the tent meeting in Tug Valley. Some of you remember that crusade. About 70 or 80 people got saved. First or second night, we was in a tent there. and Tent meetings messed up the music and sound sometimes. And we was having trouble with the sound system. And I told her about this the other day. I was supposed to be getting it all figured out. I couldn't figure it out. Something was crackling or popping or whining or something. And there was no Marvin in them days for me to yell at. So uh, I, I was trying to figure it out. Well, Jesse was sitting there. I didn't hardly know Jesse yet. Just barely met him at that point. He was sitting there listening to it. And he said, hey, I'll help you if you want me to. And I'll be honest with you. I remember thinking, all right. What do you want to do? He said, lead me over there. So I, he grabbed my arm. I led him over to the tent. He said, take me to where the, the board is, the control thing is. So I took him to it. He said, now go over there to the microphones and I'll tell you when I want you to talk on it. He starts saying, check on that one. And I'd say, test one, test one. I went on down through it. After just a little while, blind Jesse goes, here you go. This cord is bad. And he was right. I thought, how did you do that? You know how he did it? Because he had a mama always telling him, you can do whatever you want to do. He had a mama that wouldn't even tell him he was blind. She's just an encourager. Well, I, I thank God for that. I thank God for the moms who encourage. I praise the Lord for the moms that encourage her children in the ministry things and things of God. She was all these things, the manager and the overachiever and the teacher, the helper and encourager. Then I've got she was a runner, the R. She's a runner. You notice this woman never stopped in this text here if you read it. One man said the busiest people in the world are young mothers. I get under conviction at times because Becca never stops. She comes home from the office, she don't ever stop. She goes right into doing laundry. She's doing laundry all the time and then she's in the kitchen and she's doing this and doing that. Sometimes I'll, I'll get there before her and I'll get under conviction because I just want to go sit down. And I think, don't go sit down, help her. The mamas, they just run, 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 run. They're going all the time. This is the model mother, manages, overachieves, teaches, helps, encourages, runs for her family. And so I want to show you one last thing. Because of all that, this good mother is respected. Look at verse 28, 29 again. Her children arise up and call her blessed. She's respected by her children. They brag on their mom. Look at the next part of verse 28. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. She's respected by her husband. But more than all that, it's written about her by the Holy Spirit. Verse 29, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. The Holy Ghost respects her. God in heaven, our Savior, respects this kind of mom. This mom that just gives of herself tirelessly. Stand with your heads bowed, your eyes closed. It's about 12 minutes after. You're doing great. I've been preaching a little over 30 minutes. What does God see you as today, Mom? I didn't say what do you think about yourself. What does God see you as today, Mama? A missing mother or more of a model mother? Could you just come and ask the Lord to make you the kind of mom you ought to be? And let me say this to you. If your kids are grown... They still need you to be a model mother. They still need wisdom to come out of your mouth even though your children are grown. Would you come and ask God to make you a model mother? And maybe the rest of us ought to come and pray for the mothers. Because let me say something to you. The devil's after them. The devil would love to take every good mom and break her heart and ruin her life. And we ought to come right now. The husbands, the kids, you ought to come to the altar right now and pray a hedge of protection around the mothers in your life today. Brother Ken, you got something you're going to sing? Several are coming. Some of you mamas should come. Some of you young ladies that are not yet married, but maybe one of these days you want to be, you ought to go ahead and come and start asking God to make you this kind of mom. Some of you men ought to come and thank God for your mother. Thank God for the mother of your children. And you ought to pray that God puts his hand around them. Let's go ahead and start. Away from God. Let's don't be the missing mothers. Let's be the model. Man.